What's up, guys? Passive income. I hope that you guys enjoy this one. Just a little disclaimer. Ed Talenti shows up a lot, and I don't really think that Ed Talenti is a passive income scammer. But if you type in passive income for music producers, Ed Talenti pretty much dominates that space. I also think that he knows what he's doing when it comes to targeting that keyword. So even though he's relatively realistic about it, uh, he, he, he knows what he's doing. You know what you're doing. Anyway, guys, enjoy. Today, I'm going to talk about four different ways to generate passive income as a music producer. The ultimate goal with our music is to live full time off of our music. If you're a music producer and you want to make more money besides the obvious making beats, you deserve to make money in your sleep. Here to drop some producer money making gems. I love passive income. I do. I'll be honest with you money as a musician let's go ways to make passive income as a broke artist hey what's up guys in this video i want to share with you how you can make money online from selling your music now this is another one of them things that i can 100 percent say that is legit it can be done stop it there is no shortage of internet gurus that are going to help us generate money in our sleep to their credit, some of them actually did say that their methods would take a long time, and some of them even mentioned money-making methods that were not passive. Like Adam Ivey, who suggested that you go to your local grocery store, play some guitar or sing, and hope that people throw some money into your hat. Now number two, busking. Everybody from Ed Sheeran to Justin Bieber and a lot of people that you probably know have done this is uh when you play live for people essentially take requests do originals and just interact with the people you can do this from anywhere in front of a grocery store a downtown area you can open up a guitar case put a hat down have a jar a bucket a pail and people will tip you if you're any good what is passive income it sounds like a stupid question but a lot of people don't seem to quite get the concept unlike active income it's the act of making something once and cashing out on it over and over and over again. Whereas with active income, it's you putting in the work and getting paid as you go, like a nine to five. The downside of active income is that you're working said nine to five, your money is capped. Yes, you can get overtime, but for the most part, you're gonna be working a 40 hour week. You can work harder during that 40 hours, but you're not gonna make more than if you did nothing during that 40 hour period. You're capped at whatever your hourly rate is. I don't remember where I heard this, but it's a powerful question, and I'm going to ask you now. Really think about it. If someone asked you how much they could offer you to take one hour off of your life, how much money would you ask in exchange? You're probably thinking, that's a huge ask. I'd want a considerable amount. But would an hour of your life be the federal minimum wage of $7.25? Or would it be worth $25? Only you can decide that. And that's the appeal of passive income. It's having more autonomy, freedom, and flexibility, making life more worth living, while not having to worry if you'll be able to pay your rent this month or living paycheck to paycheck with little control of your circumstances. Because of the desire for passive income, a lot of scams have been running rampant. Not only on YouTube, but on TikTok, Instagram X, Every social media is loaded with passive income opportunity schemes that are very unlikely to work or worked a long time ago. Of course, this also exists heavily in our community, and many of our fellow music producers are cashing out on the passive income scams. I'm going to show you how this channel known as Dream Hop Music is able to make more than $500 to $1,000 a month in all passive income. Now, this channel is using the lo-fi music of other people and taking that lo-fi music and making a complete playlist using it. Unironically, making passive income doing it. This leads to the question, does passive income even exist? Not the way you think it does. Making it be once and selling unlimited licenses to it may sound appealing. And it is absolutely possible and plenty of people on leasing platforms do that because of the fact that it works. There is an argument that it's not truly passive due to the fact keeping a beat catalog fresh and catering to customers is active income, but there isn't a cap on revenue. If you're able to do this, the more work you put in, the more you'll make. 
A lot of people pulled this off, which caused a gold rush of hopefuls flooding beat leasing platforms. Every second, it becomes harder and harder for anyone to sell anything. However, many early adopters of beat leasing like to say that it's easier than it actually is, and that you can come onto this platform and make passive income. Why would they do that? If beat leasing is their main source of income, why would they try to get other people into, say, their beat leasing course? The answer is, if everyone sources water from the same well, everyone dies of thirst. Can you make a little money off of these platforms? Of course, but most people don't. Some people have been on these platforms for years and haven't made a dime, but they've invested a good amount of money to bulk up that beat catalog. Streaming is the same way. So much music, so little demand. Can you make money passively streaming your music? Yes. Are you likely to cover your bills with Spotify revenue? It's highly unlikely that you'll make enough to even cover the cost of distribution that year, especially with the unwillingness of these streaming platforms to pay people what their music is worth. Another problem is that because it's so easy to make music, many people are making terrible music and are unable to look at their music objectively enough to understand they're just clogging the airways. The truth is, you can make music for a week, and if you'd like to, you can distribute it, which causes, you guessed it, saturation. Many people are guided by influencers that tell them that they can and should distribute their music or lease their beats even though they're not ready. There's no target more gullible than someone who just started, which is why very few of these influencers do a quality check of their potential client's music. They just talk about how lucrative all of this is and that only they can show you the way. How would they know without listening to the music? Why would these clearly wealthy influencers spew all of this nonsense anyway? Because the well dried up and it's time to pivot into one of the oldest tricks in the book, taking advantage of desperation. How did these influencers become wealthy? Most likely from selling bullshit. Is it possible that they actually once made money in whatever facet of the music industry they claim? It is possible. Is that how they're making money right now? No, not anymore. 2020 was such an anomaly. Never have we experienced anything like that in our lifetimes. So many people on the internet at once trying to figure out how to make money. Many of them lost their jobs or were furloughed and had nothing but time. So many creators were born in 2020. Some became huge successes and never had to go back to work again. And as we saw this happening, we wanted to be the ones that made it out of the pandemic in better shape than what we went in. Some eye-opening things happened during that time. We found out that people working for pennies at Target secretaries, teachers, factory workers, waiters. They were funny, smart, entertaining, and talented. Brand sponsorships made it clear these people were worth a lot more than $30,000 per year. We found out that we could take on huge players on Wall Street with GameStop. We also found out that people will buy pixelated JPEGs for hundreds of thousands of dollars. That was a more unfortunate discovery. This is why it's so imperative that everyone works a 9-to-5. This may sound conspiratorial, but as they say, idle hands are the devil's playground. If you ask me, I think that idle hands allow us to become who we're supposed to be. They teach us what we're capable of, what we're passionate about. Being a cog in a wheel that just makes the wealthy more wealthy is not what we were set out to do. The hustle and bustle of everyday life keep us numb and distracted, just the way they want it. 2020 put into perspective how fleeting life can be, how little we've slept, and how we really feel about our jobs and that nobody is going to save us. We can only save ourselves. The perfect storm erupted, and rather than acquiring a real skill, many folks during the gold rush stepped in with their shovels, and they rushed every niche in droves in with force. Did scams exist before 2020? Of course, but a lot of them spawned in 2020. With every one individual with a talent, a dream, or even a hobby who ventured online, there were 20 shovel sellers ready to pounce. Let's break down these passive income strategies so that I can tell you one by one why they're all bullshit. Let's talk about sync deals. I'm bulking placements with a major artist in here as well. Saturation is at an all-time high, with so many producers vying for the same opportunities to have their music in films, TV shows, commercials, whatever. This flooding of the market makes it difficult for new producers to stand out and get the attention of music supervisors. Building relationships with decision makers in the industry takes time and effort. Developing connections with music supervisors, producers, directors, and advertising agencies requires tons of networking working, and a solid portfolio of high-quality music that aligns with specific needs of a certain project. 
Licensing music for sync deals involves knowledge in the legal and contractual aspects, understanding copyright laws, licensing agreements, royalties, and clearance procedures can be overwhelming for producers without legal representation or industry knowledge. The preferences and trends in sync licensing constantly evolve. What works for one project or client may not necessarily resonate with another, requiring you to adapt your sound and style to fit various different opportunities. It would take years to set this up in a way for it to be passive or consistent. Another example of active income. This is not passive at all. Re-uploading content. This one is so ridiculous I was debating on whether or not to even add it to the video, but there are plenty of guys pushing this nonsense that you can search for copyright free music and upload it to your own channel as a compilation. They love to direct you over to Lo-Fi Girl, formerly Chilled Cow. It was established in 2017 and streams lo-fi music to study or relax to. It's found massive success. By the way, the music on Lo-Fi Girl is submission-based, and some comes from their own label Lo-Fi Records, so it's not just re-uploading copyright-free music. What they don't tell you is Lo-Fi Girl inspired thousands of copycats, which rendered this entire idea to 24-7 music streams as a passive income source completely useless. But a lot of these charlatans profit off of selling courses teaching you how to turn this into a money printer. Like so many, they waited for the well to dry up and then started directing people over to the dry well because they're not making any income from it anymore. Not to mention, YouTube is cracking down hard on these channels. Faceless AI channels, by the way. YouTube does not want those on the platform. And that's pretty much the same deal. The well is drying up, so a lot of courses are starting to spawn up about that. Submitting music to and earning from music licensing libraries is challenging. Yet so many creators are pitching this as a passive income stream for new producers. Music licensing libraries receive a vast number of submissions from composers, producers, and artists worldwide. With such high competition, standing out and getting noticed is near impossible, especially for people new to the industry. Most music licensing libraries have high quality standards and criteria for accepting music submissions. They look for professionally produced tracks with high production value and commercial appeal. Meeting these standards requires skill, experience, and resources, which can be barriers for newer music producers. Music libraries often have specific genre preferences or cater to niche markets. As a result, even if a piece of music is well-produced, it may not align with the library's target audience or current needs, reducing its chances of acceptance and monetization. Some music licensing libraries require artists to sign exclusive agreements, meaning they can't submit the same music to other libraries or retain ownership rights. Non-exclusive agreements allow artists to submit music to multiple libraries, but it may result in lower royalties or licensing fees. Even after music is accepted into licensing libraries, artists typically earn royalties based on a revenue-sharing model. This means that they only receive a percentage of the licensing fees or royalties generated by their music. While this can provide passive income over time, the amount earned may vary depending on certain factors such as usage, licensing terms, or the library's revenue sharing policies. The proliferation of music licensing libraries in recent years has led to market saturation. Despite these challenges, success in music licensing libraries is possible, but again, in my opinion, it's not passive. Finally, courses. This is the most passive way to make money. It's true that you have to create and market this course, but if you set this up correctly, holy shit, it could be a self-sustaining product. If you look at the course creators in our space, they use their own customers to market their own product. Think about the video testimonials from some poor suckers with three subscribers and an affiliate code to this shit course that they took that definitely, definitely changed, changed their, music their music game. game. The other reason that this is a really viable opportunity is you can charge just about whatever you want. And the last reason is you can make it on any subject. Anyone can can do it. You don't have to know anything. All you need is a sob story about how you used to be a broke producer too, empty promises, outdated information, some sort of useful information that you've learned for free from other sources and a loose curriculum. Make sure that you time bind the price. Don't worry, that's just a trick. The sale is probably never going to end because your price is set. And the price in a seven, have an email funnel that leads everyone into a free educational workshop that doesn't educate but pitches the course some more because these people that made it all the way into the free workshop are hotly even better if you can trick people into thinking this pre-recorded free workshop is live. You get the idea. When they're done with your course, upsell another more expensive course where their issue will really be solved this time. And don't worry, they won't ask for a refund. They're too embarrassed they fell for your bullshit.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. These videos have gone up in quality and it's a, a lot more work, but at least I don't have to fuck with the green screen anymore. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.